champion Slim, the hitman Albaher, and his greatest rival, the Big Gipper, Anishan Gibb. So many bouts live on the home of boxing, DAZN, all brought to you by Visit Qatar. This is X Series 19. That was an applause break. <laughs> Taking it to Kala Sauerland. Kala, fantastic event here that's being assembled for Qatar. Talk about how exciting this is. Well, it's uh, no coincidence that today marks the one year anniversary of our first supercard, the Prime card. And today, we've just gone and topped that. We've got five main events that we'll be bringing to you in the Super Bowl of this space. We're delighted to announce that this will be in the wonderful country of Qatar, the vibrant city of Doha, and we're looking forward to an amazing week over there. Please note, it is in the true misfit style. We're breaking the rules again. It's a Thursday night start. It's in the middle of the Formula One week over there. Massive week for Qatar. Massive week bringing all the eyes of the sporting world onto Qatar. So Sunday, starting Sunday for the media will be the grand arrivals and then the usual fight week in some amazing locations. All live, of course, on the zone. And we're looking very forward to visit Qatar. It's gonna be fantastic, it's been a big decision for us where to take the next Super Bowl of the scene and the Qatar Supercard, um, we're looking really forward to this one. History continuing to be made. Let's take it to the VP of Marketing at the Zone, Alfie Sharman, the home of boxing, and like Hal is saying, a Super Bowl that will bring it to Qatar. What are your thoughts on this? Yes, good turn of phrase. Firstly, congratulations, Ben, for your performance over the weekend. I think you're very good. <laughs> Um, yeah, Super Bowl, um, thanks everyone for coming here today, uh, great moment for us, um, unbelievable card, X-Series 19 from top to bottom is stacked, you know, we've got crossover boxing heroes uh, here and uh, people looking to take it up to the next level and obviously Slim, Anderson Gibb um, on, on, the, on the 27th of November are, are putting themselves in a position to potentially have a shot at the crossover king KSI which I think is, is kind of undeniable at this moment in time. Wish the best of luck to absolutely everyone on the card. Um, really look forward to it for us. It's part of a, a, a packed schedule on the zone this week. We have Francis and Garnu returning to, to the cage this Saturday, uh, live worldwide on the zone. October 26th, we're up in Manchester uh, for Jack Catchall versus uh, former world champion Regis Progray. Uh, all part of your subscription November the 9th over in the US. Fantastic double header, Boot Zenis, Bam Rodriguez, uh, Ray Ford also on that card. Incredible value as part of your subscription. So that's a great time uh, for us uh, at, the, at the business. I'm incredibly proud to be sitting here and delivering fights every week to fight fans all over the world. If you're a fight fan and you haven't subscribed to the zone, I don't know what you're doing, but make sure you do it now and make sure you do it before Thursday, the 27th of November to join us for this amazing card live and exclusive worldwide on the zone. 100%. Now, before we get to the fighters on this card, let's take it to the crossover king himself, KSI, head of the table. Talk to me about your thoughts on this amazing card. All right, so real quick, can we make some noise to this card, ladies and gentlemen? Literally five main events. First of all, we have Ben Williams versus Jarvis. Like two absolute juggernauts going together and obliterating each other for both for all of us to see. We have Jay Swingler versus Nick Lamal. Ladies and gentlemen, we are getting the rematch. People are saying that Nick should have won. Jay Swingler is coming back to show everyone that no. I'm going to make a statement. I'm here to make sure that everyone says my name. And when I win this fight, it's going to be me, Jay Swingler. Nick is coming, coming back to be like, no, 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 brother. I'm not here to let you rob another fight. I'm here to show the world that I'm all about this. And I can't wait. Ladies and gentlemen, we have King Kenny versus Salt Pappy. A huge fight between these two. Salt Pappy is here to finally claim his name again as one of the best fighters on this fucking, in this fucking company. King Kenny is here just again show his, his talent, show his skill, show, show his finesse. Denji! And then... <laughs> that no one can tell. I've literally asked so many people. 
People have said, oh, I think Slim. Oh, I think it's Kim. Guys, no one knows. It's going to be a huge fight. Explosions on the 28th of November. Live on The Zone, pay-per-view. It's going to be insane, and I can't wait. Let's make some noise again for this. Take it to the fighters. First fight of the press conference is a attempted defense of the welterweight throne with Jarvis putting the title on the line against Irish superstar, the surging contender, Ben the Bumblebee Williams. Jarvis, it's been a long layoff. Welcome back. How excited are you to defend this belt? I'm very excited and there's no better person than to, to defend against Ben. You know, he's a top contender and uh, a lot of people think he's going to win and I'm just going to silence everyone. Ben, he's been recovering from some injuries since winning the belt, but you believe that there's other reasons why this fight hasn't happened sooner. Yeah, I've been calling out Jarvis for a while now. Um, he got offered to box me on the Tobin card. He said no. Um, Tommy had an injury, so that's fair, but look, it's gonna go down November 28th. And yeah, may the best man win. Gonna take that belt home, back to Dublin to where it belongs. Jarvis, what do you make of Ben's fights so far inside Misfits? Yeah, I mean, you know, he's fought uh, a couple a couple good guys. Fez Batiste is okay. Uh, Warren Spencer, of course, everyone saw that early stoppage. Uh, who knows where that could have gone. Uh, this fight's a lot different. It's a big step up for him. And, you know, I'm just going to show that I'm on a different level than he is uh, in on, on that night. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a shock when, uh, when he gets in there with me. Ben, what level do you think Jarvis is on? Yeah, I think he's good. Totally boxer. Clean. But um, I think the speed that I have will be unmatched. Power's there. I think it's going to be a good brawl. But um, I think we all know he's going to come on top and uh, take that belt off him. And Jarvis, like you said, he's worthy of this. He's earned this shot at the belt. Yeah, yeah you know, he, he's had two fights on Misfits now. Top contender in my division. And this uh, this fight is really going to solidify my name in the whole welterweight division uh, when I beat him. And, you know, you're not going to beat me, bro. It's not happening. I'm going to put you to sleep. I'm going to take that belt off you like I did today. It's, 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 it's staying right here, bro. No, it's coming to Dublin. It's coming to Dublin. Ben, he thinks he's putting you to sleep. What's your early prediction for this fight? Yeah, I'd say another second round TKO. That's what I'm feeling. Yeah, I mean, with his pillow hands, he's not going to be able to do much. Uh, yeah, you feel these pillow hands. You know, this, this ain't going the distance for sure. Yeah, you feel uh, these pillow hands. He's uh, he's, he's going to go up. And you're, you're, you play Fortnite for a living. And I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to slap the head off you. Respect. You can try it. You can try it. You're playing Fortnite again after I'm done with it. We'll see. We'll see you, bro. I'm more I couldn't stay away. Uh, uh, I wasn't happy with my last performance as well and I feel like there's a lot more on the table that I still haven't taken yet and I want to prove to myself, not the people, not the fans, not my family, nobody other than me, I want to show myself that I can beat this guy and be happy with my performance. I beat him last time but I wasn't happy with my performance so to me that's a loss. And I'm taking this guy very seriously now. I overlooked him in the first fight, and I won't be doing that this time. Nick, how do you feel about your performance in the first fight? Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Misfits, KSI, Happy Punch for this opportunity, because this is so sick to be part of this card. And I am a fan first, so I'm so happy that Jay is back in the, the scene. Big up, Jay. Come on. Come on, Jay. Come on. But uh, yeah, uh, what was your question again? Uh, your performance in the first fight in X-Series 5, how did you feel about it? Oh, that was the greatest night of my life. Even though I didn't get the win, uh, I, you know, I had everyone doubting me, going into a stadium with 5,000 people booing me, and being able to walk out with my head held high. It was such, uh, I, 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 I've never felt anything like it. So yeah, my, my performance, I'm really happy with it. I wish I did a little bit more to get the win, but at the end of the day, you know, here we are for the rematch and it's going to be even better. Jay, what did you make of Nick's fights since you beat him? 
I don't think he um, performed on his on his two fights after on the tag team and then the knockout tournament thing. Anywhere as near as anywhere near as good as when he fought me. I felt like he matched my energy well in that fight. Um, but then after that, I felt like he he declined, and I think he knows that. I think he's seen. Uh, the it's, just have to say. it's just different fights. It's a tag team is a completely different game. Uh, so it was just it was just not my style of fighting. One on one. Well, I, I think right if now. you fought these the tag team fight the same way you fought me, bro, you would have taken over. You would have beat them so easy. Yeah, but it's about pacing, timing, where they can tap out. I mean, B Dave, he's tapped out against me 11 times in two fights, and I've never tapped out against him. It's it's just. The you look scared game. to fight B Dave. Me? Yeah, you looked scared, but you kept tagging every time you come in. That, I haven't tagged once against B Dave in two fights. Never once. Okay. You can watch it back. Okay. You haven't been studying your footage, bro. Okay. I don't, I don't study you, bro. Well, don't overlook me again, because that's what happened the first time. What are you going to do? I'm not overlooking the first time you fought Gib, he had a few months of training. Then he fought Churley's, had a few months of training. Then he fought me, had a few months of training. What are you going to do now when you fight someone with more than a few months of training? But, uh, we'll, we'll see, November 28th. We'll see, we'll see a version of me that no one else has seen before. We'll I see a version so. of me that is fully prepared for war. And somebody here who is prepared to, to fight somebody who's put in a full camp. Because uh, apparently that's what you're doing. You're putting in a full camp. You're training yeah. hard. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, that's good. And I'm preparing for somebody. I'm not overlooking you. Yes, sir. So we're going to see a different version this time. You'll see. Okay, a version of you on the floor. Nick, when he says he... You have no knockout power. Yo, this mate, guy... Mate, you mate, you this guy has zero knockout power. You had so much weight on Bro, me in the first you fight. you tickled me when you, you got the body of a fucking rake. And you could have put me out. <laughs> so what does that say about you? Your defense is good. I'll give it you. Your defense is good. The Philly shell, the roll, the punching from the butt, punching from the hip. You got it, bro. You got an awkward style. But, Thank man, you. you punch like a scotch egg. Mate, you had 20 pounds. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Nick, he says that he overlooked you maybe at X Series 5. Did you feel that in the ring? 100%, but I think everyone overlooked me then. Uh, but, you know, that's that's the name of the game. You gotta earn you gotta earn your teeth here. You can't just uh, come in and expect everyone's respect. I know I got it now, so I do genuinely hope I get the best, uh, best version of Jay, because he's gonna get the best version of me. Uh, I've taken this camp. Uh, more seriously than any other camp. I've had to come over adversities that I've never had to come over and it genuinely is the best version of me and no matter the outcome, as long as I go out there and give it my everything, I'm going to be so happy and uh, yeah, it's going to be a sick fight. I love it. Next up is a fight that crossover fans have wanted for years. Finally, it's time for the number one contender bout between Super Salt Poppy and King Kenny. Battle-tested stars of the scene locking their sights on each other for a hope to fight for gold next. So let's start with you. There's no hard feelings between you two, but King Kenny is in your way in Qatar. How do you feel about this matchup? I mean, um, I just want to thank Misfit Boxing for this opportunity, of course, uh, King Kenny for taking the fight. Um, this is going to be a tough fight for me. I'm working very hard to do whatever it takes to win, and um, I hope he gets ready. King Kenny, it's time for Super Salt Poppy. How long have you been waiting for this fight? Well, we knew we were going to fight each other from Misfits, the first ever Misfits one, ideally. So we've just been in the back of our head. We've always known that's a fight that's always going to happen. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm more than ready. You know, I started my journey. Everyone has seen my ups and downs, the wins, the losses. I started off with a hard path, and that's you know essentially set me up uh, for this fight because I know it's going to be a tough fight. I'm training very hard, and uh, we're going to come out victorious. Salt, you had a big bounce back victory over Amadeus Ferrari last time out on Misfits. How challenging was that opponent? Uh, it was definitely very challenging. It was very awkward, dirty, and uh, he's probably one of the strongest opponents I ever had. But I'm preparing for every that. situation, and uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be ready. Slim. Yes, sir. You had something to say there? No, he said he's the strongest opponent. I don't know about that, man. <laughs> Oh, he said one of them. Oh, never mind. My bad. Oh, my bad. <laughs> my bad. King Kenny, you had Adam Brooks at your hands last time out. Talk about that win. Uh, sorry, what was the question? Adam Brooks. Yeah. Talk about that win. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that was the first, like, um, first fight where I took a long break off and 
I mean, just worked on becoming a complete fighter and everything was coming together. I was able, you know, fighting forwards, backwards, I don't know, 69, 96, the whole lot, everything was just coming into place. Paul, sorry. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. But this matchup stylistically is quite interesting. Both yeah. you guys facing challenges maybe you haven't seen before. Salt Poppy, what's the key to beating King Kenny? Um, definitely my speed. Uh, I can um, close the distance very quick. And um, I need to stick to my strategies. And uh, yeah, I'll break them down. That's about it. Kenny, what do you make of the speed of Salt Poppy? Um, yeah, he's got, he's got a bit of speed, uh, he's lost a lot of weight, so obviously that's going to be an advantage for him. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm working with smaller guys that have speed, we're going to be ready, you know, for fight night. Obviously the stakes are high with this one, a title shot hanging in the balance between you two. What would this win mean, Salt Poppy, finally getting the victory over King Kenny? I mean, uh, getting this win uh, would give me the rematch with Slim, hopefully if he wants it. And um, whatever. And uh, I'm going to run away if you want that again, man. You saw what happened last time. I still love you, though. You're a good fighter. But we all remember what happened last time, though. Yeah, I still want the rematch. Uh, like, even if you lose or win, I would want that rematch. Okay, Kenny, what did you make of Salt Poppy's fight with Slim? Against Slim, uh, to be fair. Uh, Slim, Salt Poppy was winning that fight. He just, you know, got too. Winning is two rounds, bro. Come on, son. It's a fight is fuck. Bro, we doing eight round fights now. Relax, he got knocked out in a five. Bro, uh, half a fight he got knocked out, cuz. Half a fight. That's five. We doing eight round fights. I'm doing big boy fights now. You, know what I'm you can't say winning a fight. One round is not fucking winning a fight. Two rounds is not winning a fight, bro. Yeah, but I'm not allowed he got to win. Yeah, but in his, whole, in his whole life, he never got knocked out. He got knocked the fuck out. End of story. That's what happened. I bada bing, bada boom. That's what happened. As I was saying, I think Salt Pappy was winning that fight, but then Slim just caught him with a lucky shot, you know, and got knocked out, and that was it. Fair. Now, as mentioned, there's not bad blood necessarily between you two, but Salt Poppy, what is the message that you want King Kenny to keep in mind for the next six weeks? This made the best man win. Good luck. That's about it. Fair. Kenny, what's the message you want Salt Poppy to keep in mind? I'll be ready. I'll be more than ready. I love it. Now let's take it to the man without an opponent here on the stage, Deji, one of the most beloved fighters returning in Qatar. Let's talk about it. Not an opponent up here on stage, though. I guess you could say I'm in the thick of it. <laughs> no sense. What happened, Deji? What happened to the opponent? Um, so, I had an opponent, unfortunately he pulled out, got the contract and said, nah. So, yeah, now I have no opponent. Who was it? Am I allowed to say? No. I'm not, I can't say. I can't say. I can't say. Alright, well, there you go. <laughs> what has training camp been like though, getting back into the swing of things? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, um, it was the, the, the challenge that JJ sent me, that's what kind of made me get back into boxing, I'll be real. Because then I was like, already doing fitness, so then I was like, alright, might as well kill two birds in one stone. Fair. And, while it's been brought up, the challenge, what happened? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I lost that challenge. Um, it is what it is, but, you know, we moved. You had a lot of time for it. Yeah, I trust right? <laughs> And for KSI, what does it mean having Deji on this card in Qatar? I mean, it's incredible. It's always good to have Deji uh, fighting. Uh, I, I've always said, like, you know, if he trained hard enough, you know, as hard as me, he'd be better than me. Uh, so, yeah, you know, maybe if we can get even half of that, that'd be great. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it's good to have him, you know, on this card and, you know, Whoever his opponent is, I'm sure that she's going to put in that work and get you know, part on the show. Now, Deji, while we have the opportunity, if there's anyone that you have in mind, there yeah. is a microphone to call him out. Um, Joella, Bryce Hall, <laughs> come get it. Uh, Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just want to fight, really. I want to test my skills and have fun. So, yeah. Pick up Daily. Come on. <laughs> 
I love it, I love it. Well, let's take it to this main event. One of the most anticipated fights in crossover history, Slim the Hit.